Show three hours of devastation. I'm gonna have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. Destruction. Did you see the memo about this? And decimation. The Nation of Decimation, a three hour show dedicated to bringing you the best independent metal from around the world. But we don't just stop there. We've got an entire program each and every week of what we discuss, from bands to crazy news. It's the Nation of Decimation, and it starts now. Salutations, you dirty cum sucking bastards. What's up, bitches? It is uh, Tuesday night, 624, 2014. We are live. Live, Nation of Decimation. 
Official fucking new radio. Official fucking new radio. My name is Nob. He's the bag man. That's we've me. We've got a show to do for you this evening. Yes, we do. And uh, we've got Bion calling in from Massachusetts. They got a show this weekend at Cherry Street Station, which I will not be attending. Just putting mm. that out there right in fucking advance. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I'm not going. It has nothing to do with anybody but my wife. On Saturday, it is my anniversary with my wife. Happy we'll anniversary, sir. We'll be married sir. six years. Awesome. So you guys can go fuck yourselves. Because hmm. uh, I'm certainly not going to put myself in the doghouse. Hell to no. go to a show, even though Into the Coven is playing like in Waterbury, I, I might have to sneak over there. I might might have to try to do that, but I can't guarantee it. Want a quick shout out to uh, Josh from Into the Coven for calling in on Sunday. Also wanted to quickly apologize. Ready for this? I'm sorry we weren't more offensive. Hmm. We had probably by far the most offensive raunchy, nasty, disgusting, racist-filled atrocity of a radio show on Sunday known as Chaos. It was me, some dude, Mr. Stale Cush, live and in person. Ah, nice. Mr. Rob from Mr. Rob's American Tiger Martial Arts was in attendance, witnessing the debauchery Full room here, huh? That fucking ensued. Hmm. It was pure, unadulterated disgustingness. Mr. Rob showed up at my house like, I don't know, 2, 3 o'clock. And we started drinking. Heavily. So by the time some dude showed up at like 6, 30, 7 o'clock, me and Mr. Rob were already in the bag. And we were told, I'm fucking shit-faced. Shit-faced. Before we even go on the air. And then proceeded to drink more throughout the evening. So, yeah, I apologize that we weren't more offensive. I think we, if we tried harder, sounds we, like a good we time. Could have potentially been more offensive. Hmm. Potentially, we may hear from some dude. He said he might call in. Cool. So there's that. Um, probably going to be ending the show early tonight because I'm fucking spent. I'm fucking tired. Uh, you know, I work very early in the morning. I don't get home until very late at night. And I'm just fucking beat. And to be quite frank with you, I don't really think anybody gives a fuck. Those of you who do, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Those of you who don't, go fuck yourselves. Yeah. Not that they would know that I told them to go fuck themselves because they don't care. Well, they could always listen back to the show. I guess. On the webpage. It's on, it's on uh, YouTube, YouTube and on uh, OFNR. Yep. Yeah. Quick, uh, quick thing. If you clone yourself and jerk off your clone, is that self-masturbation? Answers include, no, it would be mutual masturbation. Uh, dual carrot snap. Ron says, in my book, yes. Now you have two knobs jerking off and still jerking off. Brian Almeida from fucking The Shape says, absolutely, fucking lutely is it jerking off. Christ Havoc says, no, it's homoerotic and sexual masturbation. Whatever the fuck that is. And Jumpy George says, That activity is what we call third-person masturbation. It will be the favorite pastime of the future. Also had uh, Chaos members chiming in, so if you missed Chaos this past Sunday, you missed their answers. Fuck yourself. Hmm. There's nothing uh, memorable about what they said towards it? No, there's plenty memorable uh, what they said, but if you missed it, fuck off. There you go. I'm not going to repeat what they said. They Hot said it. You missed it? Fuck off. Upcoming interviews, Tuesday, July the 1st, next week, we got Keith, She Walks Without Legs. The 8th, we got Jesse James of Posidemic Entertainment and Composing the Apocalypse and a new band that he's in, I guess. Should be interesting. He's been promoting like a whore, which is awesome. Thank you, Jesse, for promoting like a whore. Not many bands give a fuck enough to promote. Most bands don't give a flying fuck. Oh, you're on the radio. Yeah, we will fucking hook you up with an interview. We will talk with you on the air. And you will do absolutely nothing about it. So I, I appreciate people like Jesse who actually take the fucking time, the two seconds that it takes to fucking put out a Facebook post and say, hey, in a couple weeks I'm going to be on Off and R for those of you motherfuckers who give a fuck. Thanks. Oh, 
I'm just saying. I mean, look, I'm, you know, I'm not bitching. I'm just saying. Let's just all be fucking really honest. Tuesday, July the 15th, we got Jesse May of Alternative Control. I'm sure she'll be uh, promoting heavily. Because she's good like that. AJ Pelletier of the awesome In the Red. I'm a huge fan. I really am. Like, I'm not blowing smoke, not just being a knob. I actually really like fucking In Red. They're really good fucking... They are a really solid fucking band. And uh, I keep trying to get DJ Perlman of uh, Revel 9 fame to spin some shit on Hard Rock Lunchbox every Thursday at noon. Because I listen. I listen to the Hard Rock Lunchbox every Thursday at noon. Because it's fucking Perlman and I like to fuck with him. So I constantly request in the red. He, he got so fed up with me. He actually hit up in the red and was like, give me some fucking music so I can make Knob shut the fuck up. So. Well, I'm going to be playing some in the red tonight. In a short while, stick around for that. Yeah, it's just not the same. I mean, I can play in the red all day. I can play the whole fucking album if I wanted to. It's of course, the, same, the song we're going to play, they got a new video for on YouTube. It's so. not the same than, uh, you know, bothering DJ Perlman of Revel 9 going, place him in the red, place him in the red, place him in the red. Would you please place him in the red? Please, please, please. And then he gets mad. Hmm. And then he's like, fuck you now. And it's great. Of hmm. course, Tuesday, August the 17th through August the 31st, we are on Nation of Vacation. Mm-hmm. And the weeks can't go fast enough. I certainly need one. I know Mr. Bagman could possibly use one. We will be on a two-week hiatus. We will be back in September. With a fury. To discuss the very last OFNR uh, event. Not saying OFNR is going anywhere. I'm just putting it out there. I'm putting it out there. I wasn't sure I was gonna. But I am putting it the fuck out there. This will be the last official OFNR event. Because I'm done booking and promoting shows. I'm, I'm fucking done with it. Hmm. So FN Fest will be the last official OFNR sponsored alone event. And it's for a good fucking cause. So if you don't come out, you don't come out. You're, you're, you're not fucking hurting my feelings any. Because I don't get butt hurt. You know? I don't fucking get butt hurt when you don't show up to shit. Because I don't give a fuck. That's where I'm at. And I don't care that you don't care. That I don't care. I don't give a fuck. So if an R, I do this because I love this. That is the only fucking reason I do this. It's the only reason I'll continue to do this. Those that support us, you guys are fucking why we do it. Because, yeah. you know, you guys are the ones that listen and give a fuck and tell us about cool shit, cool events, bands, and other wonderful things. So we will have uh, Jeffrey Miles calling in sometime before the Nation of Vacation. Though he has not uh, put that on paper, I'm trying to get him to realize that I'm going on a fucking two-week vacation and I'm not fucking picking up the OFNR hotline for anyone. So if you don't know my home number, you're fucked. Hmm. Leave me a message. That's, of course, August the 17th through the August the 31st. Two weeks of vacation. I think I'm actually going to try to take actual work vacation too that week. Nice. So that I could try to, like decompress fucking chill out the event that uh Bion is playing is friday this friday june the 27th with death prayers clover from new york versa and of course Bion. that's at cherry street station the metal mecca of connecticut five dollar cover 21 and over lineup is metal rock post hardcore for whatever that's worth All right, Dan. Happy birthday to uh, Ron Zombie. Yes, OFNR alumnus. Hell yeah. Was here at OFNR uh, for a little while, for like six months or so, doing a wrestling show. Speaking of wrestling, he so, just got an award for something, didn't he? Yes, he did. And congratulations Hell to yeah. Mr. Ron for being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, it was the Independent Hall of Fame. I want to say it was the NEW or NEFW or something of that name. I... I honestly, I don't know because I'm an asshole. <clears throat> but uh, congratulate. I mean, nobody. Who else better deserving than fucking the hardcore icon known as Mr. Ron Zombie? I mean, New it, England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame class of 2014. NEPW. I knew it was any something or other. Hmm. So there you go. Uh, yeah, shout outs to Ron. I mean, dude, uh, the guy put his body through hell. Still does. If, if you've seen something, well, Man. he does. 
but at a different degree. Hmm. In his younger years, some of his matches with the Blue Meanie, for instance, holy shit, dude, some of those matches are just fucking carnage. Pure, unadulterated carnage. Disgustingness. So, congratulations, Mr. Zombie. Hell yeah, man. Gonna be playing some nasty disaster soon, too. Yeah, man. Yeah. So what else is going on now? Have you seem uh, a little bit uptight this evening? I'm fucking tired, and I fucking really particularly didn't want to do the show this evening, but we have Bion calling in, so I'm doing it. Hmm. You know? Because that's what obligation's all about. You know what I'm saying? That's you gotta right. do what you gotta do. You know? Yes, I'm you do. I'm fucking tired, man. I'm fucking... I'm, I'm beat up, man. I fucking battled hard Sunday night, and it's Tuesday, and I feel like I've been run over by a fucking truck. So, excuse my... Uh, tone, if you will. I ju- you know what it is, Bagman? I just don't give a fuck. Hmm. I really just... I've, I've gotten to this point in my life, specifically and especially when in, when in regards to OFNR and, and the bullshit politics that there are in the fucking music scene. I just don't give a fuck. I just don't give a fuck. And maybe that makes me an asshole. I'm a music fan with too much fucking time on my hands, and that time has become precious to me. So the amount of time on my hands has become less. And quite frankly, I get nothing out of doing all the things that I do for the scene, besides the satisfaction of helping others. Hmm. And I do it because I want to fucking help others. That's the only fucking reason I do it. Period. I don't give a fuck about the politics. I don't give a fuck if you like me. I don't give a flying fuck. I don't care. Those that support us, I know those that that actually truly support us and truly give a fuck about what we're doing. There are others, however, out there who could give a flying fuck about anybody else but themselves. And that's just the reality of the situation. So, I do this show for the people that give a fuck. Hmm. The people that not only tune in live, like those of you hip cool motherfuckers tuned in now, uh, but those of you who actually tune into the YouTube show, which there aren't very many of you, and this is where the reality starts to set in. We bust our ass. Hell yeah. You know, Mr. Bagman busts his ass to do this shit. And uh, I bust my ass to do this shit. I take a lot of my quote unquote free time to do this shit. Hmm. And, uh, you know, when we see a low return on investment, it's aggravating after a while. And I'm just got, I'm getting to this point of, of true aggravation. And I, and I really be honest with you, I enjoy doing what we're doing, but only to a point. And I just don't give a fuck anymore. And anybody who doesn't like the fact that I haven't gone to a show in a really long time, go fuck yourself. Period. I don't give a shit. Dude, I'll be at the next show somewhere down the road. I know for sure. I know for fucking sure I will be at Cherry Fest. For sure. Because I gave Keith my fucking word that I would be there. Hmm. Broadcasting on. So I'm going to be there. Broadcasting on. It's where I'll fucking be. If I see you, I see you. I don't, oh well. Anybody gives me a hard time, guess what I'm going to tell them? Go fuck yourself. Hmm. Because I just don't care. I just don't give a fuck. That's pretty much where I'm at. So, we're going to get through our fucking show best we can. We've got Bion calling in at 9. We're going to talk to them, and then we're probably going to fucking wrap it up and go fucking home. Because I'm tired, and I just don't really want to play this fucking game today. But we're here doing it because we have an obligation to Bion to help them out, try to fucking support the scene. Because that's what we're doing here, folks. Even though we, we, you might not see the Bagman or I at many shows, we're here supporting the scene the best that we can. Money's tight. Time is tight. But here we are every fucking week giving you three hours of our lives plus all the prep that we do. And it's a lot of fucking prep. Plus we spend a lot of money. Yeah. I spend a lot of money to do this show, man. You and you and me both, dude. I mean, oh, shit, I'm just, just I'm speaking for me cuz I don't want to speak for you, just, but just I do for, spend just, a lot of money to do this show. Just for off an hour alone, I spend a shit ton of yeah. dough. That's right. So, That's right. You know. Hey, I thank those that fucking give a fuck. I really yeah. do because you know there are a lot of fucking people out there who claim to give a fuck, but when your back is turned, they don't give a flying fuck. 
I did want to touch on something real quick. A lot of fakes. I want I wanted to touch on something really quickly, man. Uh, there's a band out there called Half Hearted Comeback from Massachusetts, and I wanted to touch on this really fucking quickly because I, I I don't know all the details, so I got to call them and schedule a time to talk with them personally. This past weekend, they were at a venue known as the Webster, the Webster Theater in Hartford. You know the Webster. That mm-hmm. one that we talked about many, many moons ago? Yeah, we The one where they the had, owner. you know, a car stolen out front. Right. And it was no big deal because, you know, it wasn't on their property and there's only so much they can do. Remember that? Oh, you and get if, all upset and, about you having a, uh, what if, do you call it, though? And if you, uh, if you, you know, if you, if you park in the back lot, you'll be okay and all this other shit. I don't know all the details. I don't. I do, however, know that Half-Hearted Comeback was playing with fucking Unearth at the Webster, and their fucking 1998 Honda Civic was stolen with drums in fucking tow. Isn't that awesome? Good to see that they're really trying to straighten things out over there. Now, again, I don't have all the don't details. Don't set up another petition, though, because they'll be I all mad at you. Don't have all the de- Fuck him. I don't have all the details. Where they were parked, where they were, how many people were with them, who saw what. I don't have any of those details. I do, however, have the, the detail that I will not be going to the Webster. Period. Mm. That's my that's my personal fucking opinion. If you don't like my personal fucking opinion, go fuck yourself. I mean, I don't know how many more times I can say it this evening. I really just don't care, man. I'm not going to the Webster because I don't want my shit stolen. Mm-hmm. Period. So, it is what it is, man. You know, this is not a fucking new concept. This is not one-time good deal thing. Oh, this doesn't happen very often. Okay, so it doesn't happen very often. What? Once every fucking six months? We got to hear just about two a, months ago, we man. We got to hear a fucking, <laughs> about a band that gets their shit stolen. I mean, it's fucked up, man. And and as soon as Olaf and R put it out, of course, everybody's like, "Well, so glad to hear that uh, you know they're they're doing things over there." Now, didn't and you I say laugh, the bigger shows, I the touring sc- bands get I security? Scoff. though? didn't, I, I scoff. didn't they say that? I laugh at the whole fucking thing, dude, because it's such a fucking joke. It's such a joke. Dude, I get it. You're in fucking Hartford, and, you know, Hartford's a shithole. I totally get it. But, you know what, man? Bands shouldn't have to fucking worry that they're going to go to a venue and their shit's going to get stolen. They really shouldn't have to worry about that. These bands work pretty fucking hard, man. Gear is not cheap. You know? Now, like I said, he said when signed bands come through, they have more cops and stuff there. Apparently not, huh? Apparently not for Unearth. Hmm. But he was offended hey, by the petition. Again, I don't know all the details, so I'm not going to speak on it. I'm not. I am, however, going to reach out, and I've already reached out to Half Hearted Comeback. I've got their phone number. I will be calling them off the air personally to talk about what happened, get the details before I rush headlong into this thing, because last time I fucking made a stand for anything, everybody got fucking butt hurt. Mm. Some people were on our side, some people weren't, some people were right in between, but I got a lot of fucking negative bullshit out of it. Even though I was the guy that fucking had some balls to actually do something, say something. Nothing happened, nothing came of it, so what was it worth? A whole lot of fucking dick. But I will be talking with Half-Hearted Comeback, and I will get the details, and I will let you guys know. And if I can get them on the air, I will, to talk with them personally on the air. When that might be, I have no idea. We've got fucking interviews booked for the next fucking eon month or so. Which is cool. I mean, I love talking to bands, man. Hell That's yeah. why we're talking to Bond. They totally just hit me up and say, hey, we got a show. They didn't ask for an interview. I asked them, hey, you fuckers want to do an interview since you got the show? Let's do an interview. Let's talk. Let's find out more about your band. Find out what kind of music you do. Find out what kind of things you're into. Do you like dolphin fucking? Have you ever gotten blowholed? That sort of stuff. The important topics. That is important. You know? Do you like vaginate sweaters? I mean, these are the things, these are the hard-hitting questions, folks, yeah. that we ask here at the Nation of Decimation. Have you ever escaped some dude's mom's nasty vagina? We're still here, stuck inside the vagina! Yeah, wasn't there somebody else stuck in a vagina? Over the weekend? Yes, there was. Hmm. Yes, there was. Maybe we'll get to it. I don't know. We do have news. I mean, I'm not saying we don't have news. And I've got a spurt of energy now. 
but I can see come 10, 1030. I'm going to be fucking dragging balls. So, we'll see how we feel later. Whether or not we will be doing the full three hours, as intended. We have it prepped. We're ready to go. So, if we decide to do so. Great. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, a fu- I'm fucking tired. I'm not even going to lie to you fuckers. I'm fucking beat, man. I'm fucking spent. I'm fucking tired, man. And it's nobody's fault but my own. I mean, I go to bed too goddamn late, and I get up too goddamn early, and I work my ass off all fucking day, and sit fucking two hours in traffic both ways. And, Look at Howard uh, Stern. You know, uh, thank God. Thank God I have fucking good, uh, good programming to listen to. Thank God. Because if I had to listen to regular radio, I'd fucking already have been off myself. You know? And there's only so much metal I can fucking listen to. I mean, I know, I know that sounds really weird from a guy who owns a metal station, but after a while, you know, there's only so much fucking metal you can take before you gotta, you know, change it up. Well, when you have the eclectic collections that you and I have, there's a lot to listen to that isn't always metal. So Absolutely. It's necessary uh, to visit other absolutely. things. So at any rate, that's that. Uh, this weekend, uh, Friday I had jury duty. Jury duty sucks. It's fucking bullshit. Waste of fucking time. Sat in a fucking room for a while. And they finally came in and were like, oh, hey, they settled, you can go home. <coughs> Gee, thanks for wasting a couple hours of my life that I'll never get back. Just so you can tell me you didn't need me. Dicks. I bet you if you, if you told them all to go fuck themselves, they'd have to remove you. And then you wouldn't have had to do it. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm not about to get arrested to go tell these fuckers to go fuck themselves. I mean, really. Well, just I don't tell the that. judge to fuck off. Just tell everybody else to. <laughs> you don't want to say that shit to the security guards, man. They'll tase your ass. <laughs> hey, there's certain decorum in court, man. I, I actually have respect for the court. I know that sounds weird, but, uh, you know, the, the law student in me has respect for the court and the court system. It's just, what a waste of fucking debt. So I didn't even get to go to work. I mean, not that that was any better, but... It would have kind of been better, because at least the day would have been fucking quicker, you know? I'd actually been doing something productive with my life. About one thirty or so, court let go. I was let go, let go home, and took the kids out to the park. That was fun. Saturday, I took the uh, fam down to see my parents, because I hadn't seen them in about six months. And I missed another big show. And I apologize to all the bands that I did miss out on. Because I'm sure it was a fucking rock, rock and good time. But I hadn't seen my parents in six months. And they hadn't seen my kids in six months. Which is more important, really. Because that's, you know, it's not... Once you have kids, your parents don't want to see you anymore. I mean, it's just really... I, you know, they love seeing me and all. It's not like I have a bad relationship with them. But the reality of the situation... They want to see the kids. You know? So my uh, four-year-old went in the pool with Grandpa. And they had a good old time. And we all had a good time Saturday. It was a good, good day. Uh, Sunday, hung out here, got drunk with Mr. Rob, then went on the air and had the most profane, crazy, awful show. I'm surprised we didn't get people with hate mail and upset and butthurt, to be honest. Because it was way more offensive than niggardism. I mm. mean, it was like beyond offensive, dude. It was wicked, wicked, wicked offensive. That was just terrible. And uh, I was kind of shocked to not get any kind of hate mail or... or Notification. Maybe, maybe people have realized I just don't give a fuck, and I'm gonna do what I do. And uh, and chaos is a very offensive show, and you shouldn't listen if you get offended easily. Much like this show. I mean, we're not nearly as offensive, but we're certainly not gonna. No, censor. we push. We we're push gonna, it sometimes. We're not gonna yeah. censor ourselves. Hell no. So that's what I did all weekend. A whole lot of nothing. Mm, same here. I'm broke. Yep. Broke. Couldn't get out. There's a great show going on at Saturday. Just didn't have the cash. Sorry I didn't make it, people. Didn't have the cash. It was a lot of money for that show. I'm sure it was fucking awesome. But, uh, you know. Cost money, man. Cost money. Can't make them all. You know, bills uh, come first. Family comes first. You know? Uh, It is what it is, man. You know, uh, I'm sure everybody had a damn good time without us. Hmm. I'm, I'm very fucking confident. Nobody stopped for two seconds and said, Aw. Aw, Ulf and I are not here. Aw, party's over, guys. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure the party fucking continued yeah. and was rocking good time. All the pictures I've seen look like a fucking hell of a good good time. And uh, props to all the bands. Yeah, look like the shape was hanging around with uh, Brian Fair. Which Everybody was, cool. was hanging out yeah. with Brian fucking Fair. That's all right. Uh, Dead by Wednesday's out on tour. Congrats to Dead by Wednesday. Good shit. Their CD was released today. Death of a rock star. Enjoy you your uh, enjoy your tour. Go get the fucking CD. Hmm. I'm sure it's gonna rock. Uh, yeah. This coming uh, weekend, June 27th through the 29th, out in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. Go check out Shallow Ground as part of the Warriors of Metal Fest Seven. So, uh, I don't know, if you want to go on a road trip, that's pretty fucking all right. This year, they're on the main, the big stage. Because uh, last year, they played on the Thursday before. But this year, they're on the main stage. So, go check it out. Eat shit! Yeah. Or you could do that. Whatever you're into. Eat shit! Yeah, whatever you're into. If you're, like, you know, down to eat shit, that's cool. Hmm. Want to play some tunes, dude? Yes, I do. All right. We're going to start off with a band out of New Haven, Connecticut. These guys have been doing a lot lately. We did an interview with them a while back. Check this shit out. Back. Mission Just Destination. Just
back you know bagman was saying to me outside i sound really fucking angry well you know what i am pretty fucking angry i'm an angry individual i'm angry because i feel like more and more people just really don't give a fuck about the things that are going on around them and not just and not just going to shows because quite frankly even i can't make them all and what it comes down to is the the community seems fractured even though there was this big monster show this past weekend, there were a lot of people out there, the next local show will be like every other fucking local show. It shouldn't fucking take, and I've said this fucking so many times on this goddamn radio station, I've said this so many fucking times, it's, it irks me. It shouldn't take a national band to get people to give a fuck. It just shouldn't fucking take a national band for people to give a shit. The problem is, there's so many bands, so few venues, and a lot of the fucking times, and I'll get shit for it, and I don't give a fuck, a lot of the times, it's the same fucking bill over and over and over and over again. And when a band like Currents puts out a post that says, hey, we're playing with somebody who's not the same nine bands, they get shit for it. They absolutely get fucking shit for it, and a mob mentality forms around them and goes, fuck current. No, no, fuck you. Because quite frankly, they're right. Yep. They're fucking right. And they're a damn good band, from what I've heard of them. They're pretty fucking brutal, man. Seem like nice guys. And it wasn't like they were shitting on anybody. They didn't say, oh, fuck this band and fuck this band. They just simply put out the reality of the situation. It's not the same nine fucking bands on this bill come out and hang out because you'll see something new. And all of a sudden, posts everywhere. Oh, dude, these fucking guys. These fucking guys, they said this is not the same fucking nine bands because some fucking click-ass motherfucker got all butthurt by it. Get off your high fucking horse, man. Well, I'll shit. tell you what. I'll probably give shit for this too, but... Uh... You know, Metal Syndicate, love the guys. They're doing a great job and everything. But go check out their show listings. Well, look at all the shows. You know, some great shows coming up, but you'll you'll see something familiar with every single one of them. Check it out. Check it out. We just played some fucking tunes. We played In the Red with Blink of an Eye. You can go check out the new video for Blink of an Eye, directed by Edwin Escobar. Fuck yeah. Produced uh, by Jeff Gilmer. Go check it out on YouTube after the show. Before that, we played Sick with Killing Birth out of Faroe Islands. I'm hearing rumors they are working on new material. Keep it locked. And before that, we started with Ill Face with High out of New Haven, Connecticut. Those guys have got shows coming up. 
Go check out the Mid-Ohio Syndicate and you'll see some of their shows. Yeah. So we're all caught up with all that shit. There you go. It looks like Josh from Into the Coven called. You want me to call him back? Sure. Let me call him back. See what the fuck you want. We got some time, right? Yeah, we got yeah, about we 10 got, minutes. Yeah. About 10 minutes before Bion calls in. We got Bion calling in. Yep. Charlie from Bion calling in, so... Give you an idea what Bion's like. If you like a little bit of Megadeth mixed with a little bit of Voivod, mixed with a little bit of Mastodon, stuff like that, that's what they're kind of like. Good shit. Been listening to it for the past couple days. They got two CDs out, one EP and one full length. You can go check those out on Bandcamp under Bion, B-I-O-N, out of Boston, Mass. Seems like I can't make this phone call. It's weird. Hang on a second. Let's see if this is... It's like it's not working. Fuck it. Josh, if you're listening, call back. Can't seem to call you for some fucked up reason. Because computers oh, suck. We're waiting for him to call back. Have you heard anything about this uh, Walking Dead escape they're having at the Xfinity? Uh, whatever the fuck this place is over in Hartford there. Xfinity I, uh, Theater. I, I don't I don't watch The Walking Dead. Apparently it's I, an obstacle course I that you can pay uh, anywhere from 75 bucks to 150 and it's an obstacle course, and you got a choice of being a spectator for 20 bucks. You can be a VIP and run the uh, course twice and get dressed up like a fucking zombie. Walkers, 95, you can get dressed up like a fucking walker. And 75, you can get dressed up like someone's trying to get away from the zombies. You can find out more on the uh, walk, walkingdeadescape.com forward slash Hartford. I don't think it's kind of weird, and I don't know why anybody would want to do that, but whatever. If you want to go running around in zombie makeup and pretend that you're in a show that you're not in, you go right ahead and spend 150 bucks. Enjoy yourself. Strangely enough, uh, two years ago, almost to this day, um, I was in fucking Moongoyle's uh, My Hot Zombie Girlfriend. Oh, yeah, that was pretty badass. So if you haven't seen that yet, go check that out on YouTube. I actually posted on my Facebook. You can check that out. It's a pretty funny video. I mean, you know, it's oh, yeah. silly. You're all made up and stuff. Silliness. You remember what the guy in that was that was talking to you? Remember what his name was? Kind of geeky dude. I don't know. One answered the door and you were standing there. Yeah. All right, you remember what his name was or anything? CJ Strange. Yeah, that was him. Yeah. Keep it locked because Moongoyle is doing lots and lots of stuff. New films going to be uh, filmed this summer. Keep it locked for more information as we get it. I don't know why this isn't working. It's very strange. Well, we talked about that. We talked about the... Uh, what do you call it there? Uh, just waiting for uh, that connection there. It's not working. I don't know what the fuck's going on. You got mm. me. Now somebody's calling my fucking cell phone. That's not gonna help us. But here, I'll put it on. I'll put it on speaker. Speaker on. Hello? Uh, yes. You sir, go fuck yourself. Wait, who is this? <laughs> oh, hi, Keith Dick. <laughs> That was funny. Uh, what can we do for you, I man? I know about how I have to call in next week. What's that? I said, I know I have to call, I'm calling in next week. Oh, okay. okay. I, I just wanted to make sure you weren't fucking confused. I've actually got you on speakerphone right now, because for some reason our phone line is being weird. Yeah, well, uh, what's call? I just wanted to say that, uh, We'll make like a little announcement to anybody listening out there. Um, our own destruction had the bail off of uh, Cherry Fest. So if there's anybody listening that is interested in uh, playing Cherry Fest and is able to play at 1.30 in the afternoon, uh, hit me up on uh, Facebook. That's a very enticing time slot. Can I play with my acoustic guitar? <laughs> uh, maybe I'll get someone out. Maybe I'll get Opus. <laughs> oh, you'll get somebody. You'll get Opus, not me. I'll play fucking Kumbaya, okay? <laughs> now, just to get an uh, idea. That's fucked up. I'm already gonna be there, and I can't get a time slot. That's fucked <laughs> up, man. Just to get an idea, who's playing before and who's playing after that time I'm not slot? A, I'm not a legitimate artist. This is some fucked up shit. 
Who's playing before that slot uh, and after? Is anybody interested in playing? I said uh, I was interested in playing. I can't get the spot. This is some fucked up shit. I think you just <laughs> want... You want fucking skin flute players to suck on your pole. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Just let me know when that's going to happen. I'll have to go out, out somewhere in the parking other, lot yeah, and have a cigarette like, or totally, something. Yeah, somewhere else. I don't want to watch so, that. So, yeah, who's playing before and who's playing after? Yeah. Uh... Well, I think it was uh, our, no, our own destruction opened it, and uh, nothing left to give was right after that. I see. So you're looking so for an opener. You're looking for an opening band for Cherry Fest, gotcha. which is an all-day music festival. Yeah. Indoor, outdoor. Which is going to be pretty badass. Showcase ass. of yeah. the Immortals. Yeah. I kill, yeah. I kill you coming back to Connecticut. Can't wait to hang out with Jason and the boys. Hell yeah. And girl. Yeah. Yeah, their new album is actually really killer. It's fucking, it's outstanding, dude. I think it's, it's fucking, slamming. Yeah, I think it's brutal as fuck. Yeah. And they got some really good things happening for them right now. We're gonna open for uh, Battlecross and I'm gonna get that out there to anybody listening. So, uh, if anybody is interested, hit me up. I'm interested and I'm hitting you up right now. <laughs> Alright, you can play Kumbaya. Sweet! You yeah. Know. Can you play it for half an hour? No, no, nobody <laughs> wants to hear that, man. You, you want people to, you want people to actually come to this thing. Uh, yeah, fair enough. So, well, I'm, I'm sure to be coming once I make. Never mind. How about currents? You should look uh, up we'll currents, save man. That for next week. Yeah, all right. We'll we'll talk with you next week. Give you. a shout out to currents. See if maybe they're interested, yeah. brother. Before I go into delve into anything else, so we'll save all that for next week. All right. I feel like I'm talking to myself. You probably are. I feel like it. All right, Keith. All right, I'll talk to you next week, brother. All right, bye. He, he probably can't hear you because it's on speakerphone, yeah. man, Mr. Bagman. I thought I was speaking pretty clearly, but it's yeah, all right. Well, the, the it's all good. The fucking phone's way over here, and you're way over there, so. I got you. Very possible he just didn't hear you. Yeah. Don't take offense. No, I'm not on, offended. He was on my uh Yeah, my so if you, if you want to get on this show, people spread the word. Yeah. Because it's a pretty mighty bill. You know, it's going to be a good, you know, get there early, stay late kind of thing. Great lineup for sure. Oh, shout. Quick shout to uh, Ron. He says, thank you, Bagman and Nob, for what you guys do every week. Uh, no, man. I, you know, that's not the point. And I, th- no, I, pr- I really appreciate Ron. Thank you so much for saying it. Thanks Listen- for listening. Uh, thanks for listening. That's not really the point. Because I know Ron listens every fucking week. Hmm. And Ron and, and anyone else who's out there tuned in right now. I'm not addressing you in any way, shape, or nope. form, and I'm not really addressing anyone in particular. I'm not naming names. I'm not pointing my finger. I just feel that we do this each and every fucking week, the same fucking time on the same fucking station. You can listen to it on a phone. You can listen to it on your tablet. You can listen to it on your PC. You can watch it again on YouTube. We give you the whole fucking rundown every week. And, and all better that stuff, still. And all that stuff takes time and energy, and I would just like to see a little bit more... Give a fuck. Not just for us, but for the bands that we endorse well, and this support. is what I'm saying. We're, we're promoting the hell out of all sorts of different bands you may not have ever hear otherwise. You know, we're always finding new stuff all the time. And when I find something new, I want to share it with you people. So those that get to listen, you're hearing something new every week. And those that aren't, fucking missing out. You know, I guess the one thing I, could, I can ask... Because maybe I came off a little too strong. Maybe people don't get it. Hmm. A, I'm using this to vent some steam that's been building up. Yeah. B, you know, the, those of you who do listen, those of you who do support us, share that shit with your friends when we Please. Put, it, put it up on YouTube. You know, share the fucking entire playlist of the last 13 weeks. Uh, that would be awesome because this way, you know, maybe somebody who doesn't hear will hear it. You know, and then they'll tune in each and every week because they want to hear what we're going to fucking do live. I don't know that that's true or not, but yeah, maybe. Well, you never know what we're going to do every week. That's the thing. So that should be the the reason to tune in. Because we don't do the same show every week. No. You're not going to hear... You know, I mean, let's face it, people. You put on uh, that, that big conglomerate station up crap, the crap, fucking crap. road. CCC, you suck. I hate you. Fuck off. And if you like a specific song, guess what? You will definitely hear it. Probably sure. more than you want to. Like, at least every couple hours, they'll play it again if and you again. Like, if you like a song, don't listen to Crab, 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 because you won't like it for long. Yeah, it'll, it'll kill it for you. You know, I mean, even when they were playing fucking metal and rock and stuff, man. You know, I mean, fucking Five Finger Death Punch is great, but playing it 
17 times a fucking day, the same song is really, really unnecessary. Totally so, unnecessary. You know, you tune into our show every week, you're going to hear a different set list every fucking week. You're not going to hear the same songs. And you know what, people? If you're in a band and you want to hear your band, give us a fucking shout and we'll play it, man. We got no set rules here. You know, you want to you wanna hear some... Some in the red, you want to hear some the shape, you want to hear some graven image, you want to hear some she walks around legs, you want to hear some priapism, you, you know, the list keeps going. Kali Ma, you name it, man, we'll fucking play it. You know, just let us know. So, you know, but but we're here to promote and uh, show support. That's what we do here. That's, yeah. you know, that's the reason why I wanted to do this show. That's why I came to Off and Art, because I wanted. To keep doing it because I was doing it in a fucking other lame ass fucking format. And I was looking like an asshole because that person couldn't fucking run their shit, right? And Nob gave me the opportunity to come here with a little help from Major Chugs. Why is this not ringing the goddamn... And, you know, Major Chugs gave me a little shout. Nob's like, I don't know who the fuck this guy is, but let's fucking bring him in here. And, you know, this is this is going on, what? Over two years now, right? Of trying to promote and support fucking independent metal. Why? Because I love doing this. It's the only reason. When do I ever ask anybody for anything in return? Never. It's not why I do this. It's not why Knob does this. So. It's 9 o'clock. We should be talking to Bion at some point here. This might be them right now. Here, let me... I'm going to put this on speaker, I guess, since I can't get my... Studio line to work. Hello? Hi. Is this Charlie? Uh, this is Charlie from Bion. What's going on, brother? How much are you doing? Pretty good, man. You're on the uh, Ophanar Airwaves with Knob and myself, the bag man. Hi. We are live. So, uh, thanks for giving us a call, man. It's it's cool to, uh, to actually be able to chat. I know you guys got a big show uh, at Cherry Street Station on Friday, which is uh, part and parcel for why we had you call in. So uh, yeah, let's let's find out a little bit more about like Biom about what you guys are doing, because obviously a lot of people probably here in Connecticut don't know who you guys are. So tell us. Well. Uh, we're from Boston. Uh, we're a three-piece heavy rock band. We sort of straddle that line between rock and metal. Um, a lot of sort of aesthetic similarities to those genres, but, you know, we sort of do our own thing. Uh, we're relatively new, but we have some experience. This is actually our second tour. Um, we played at Church Street last year, too. So this will be our second time through. We just, uh, we try to have a really good time. I have everyone else have a good time too. Not, not the most brutal band in the world, but high energy, technical stuff, a lot of time signatures, heavy, but not blisteringly. So, you know, you sort of, you sort of have to look into us to really figure out what we're all about. And, and how long have you guys been buy on? How long have you guys been doing this? I think we've had that name for probably three, three and a half years, but we really started buckling down and uh, trying to get things going maybe uh, like a year and a half ago. We, uh, we released our first album or EP or whatever you want to call it in August of 2012, so however long ago that was, a year and a half ago actually, that's about right. Okay, where's the uh, name Bion come from? Where do you draw that, that name from? I personally draw that name from a video game that I played as a kid that probably nobody else in the world played. It's called Fury 3. It's a Microsoft Windows game. Um, sort of like primitive 3D based flying around shooting robots. And the uh, enemies in the game are called Bions. Um, I guess some sort of bionic creature or what have you. But it apparently has some other dictionary definitions that people have thrown at us over, over the years. Uh, there was the Soviet satellite back in the 50s, I think, or the early 60s, called Bion. There's some sort of mathematical concept, a uh, dual 
Eagle Peak, Bending Lane is referred to as a biome. And I believe there's a chelis. If you search for a biome on YouTube, you'll probably get some, some excellent classical music from someone named Bion Tang. Nice. Okay, now you guys are a three-piece. How, how do you go about the writing process? Do you uh, do you do most of the writing, or do you guys get together and come up with a new idea to get idea together? I generally write almost everything. I definitely wrote absolutely everything in the past. Um, we're sort of trying to move to a more collaborative effort because, like, personally, I think that the other members of my band are really excellent musicians, and I think they have a lot to. So I'm hoping to get more of their labor involved. But um, generally, I'll just sort of work on an idea for however long it takes, and eventually I'll put together a demo and send it to the other guys. But um, I mean, I, I sing and I play guitar, so I'll, I'll write bass and drum parts for the other guys to sort of give them an idea of what I was thinking, but then they just sort of take it and run with it and make it their own. Okay, now uh, I've seen comparisons uh, in different formats of you guys being compared to like uh, Mastodon, uh, Voivod, even Megadeth. I, I hear the vocals at times sounding a little bit Davish, which is pretty all right, man. Um, I guess the question would be, what what would you say um, you, you kind of closer lean to of those three bands? You know, to give our our listeners a little idea where you guys are coming from. And what we actually end up sounding like, or in what we well, wish we sounded like. I mean, compared to those other bands, do you do you feel that there's any likeness to those bands at all, or are you guys your own entity? Think you think? Um, we we're obviously fans of those bands. Um, although to, to varying degrees, I think Mastodon is probably the one that we like the most. Uh, you really can't say anything bad about them. They're just incredibly awesome. Hell yeah. And, Things like, you know, their harmonies and stuff like that, and just the, uh, the rocking attitude that they put into their music. I think we yeah, got a lot of influence from that. Megadeth vocally, obviously, but to be completely honest, I don't like Megadeth at all. I've never liked them. Oh, okay. Um, but they're, they're, you know, the, I'm just doing funny ways. And Boyvod, I think more of the, the chord tones are used in the odd time signatures and sort of the uh, alternative yeah, sometimes not. Okay, awesome. Uh, all right, so what would you say uh, to the listeners out there that would give them an idea of what uh, they can expect to see uh, this Friday night at Cherry Street in Wallingford? I'd say that you can expect a really, a really intense night with uh, all four bands, really. So there's us, uh, Eagle Peak, Bending Lane, and Eagle Connecticut. They are sort of the more epic, screamy, almost post hardcore, but still full metal. Um, they're just, they're really awesome. They're atmospheric. They just suck you into their music. Um, Clover from upstate New York, and they're coming down part of this little weekend, three or four day tour that we're doing. They are definitely metal. Okay, man. It looks. Like, it sounds like a really great bill. Um, all right, let's talk about the uh, the the CDs you got uh, a little bit more. Um, you put Hive Mind out in 2012, and then you got a newer offering that came out this year. It's called the Session EP. In what ways do you yeah. think that uh, you've changed and grown as a songwriter since since the time you recorded the first one and the second one? I think as a songwriter. Things haven't changed a whole lot. I think that we've all sort of gotten a better grasp of what we sound like recorded and the things that we do well and things that we stuck at, things like that. Um, but overall, I think the songwriting approach was pretty similar between the two. I do think the recording approach was completely different. I mind was a studio effort that we saved up money for a very long time and then went and did it. And we didn't necessarily know all that much about what we were doing. And we got a very, I think it sounds really nice, but I'm not entirely sure at this point. It's been a year and a half. And I think that our sound has evolved since then. I think the special EP 
key, even though it's lower fidelity, I think captures more of what we are, what we sound like live, and what we sort of intend our music to sound like. Okay, and you can actually get both of those on Bandcamp for free right now, right? Yeah, say what you want. Say zero. Say hundred bucks. No, better. Awesome, people. Go out and definitely check this out. I've been uh, listening to both of them over the course of the past couple of days because I must confess I actually uh, had not heard of you guys uh, before that. So I actually got down, sit down, check it out, and really loved what I'm hearing, man. It's good stuff. Thank you. Absolutely. Now, uh, give us an idea what's going on up in uh, the Boston local metal scene. I mean, we got the Connecticut metal scene here. You know, and it's thriving. Lots and lots of shows going on. What's going up? Going on up in Boston? Well, I've been going to a lot of sort of black metal shows recently, black and doom and that sort of stuff. Um, there's a lot of heavy music in Boston. There's a lot of music in general. The Odyssey of Berkeley has the New England Conservatory. They're just musicians everywhere, growing on trees. You know, sleeping on subways. So it's like Boston is not the biggest town in the world. I'm sure everybody knows. And sometimes it feels like there are just too many musicians in town. Um, and that's definitely something that every band I've ever been part of or known personally has run into that really, in a place like LA or New York, you can play in the city and get a really good following without ever really using town. But in Boston, there just aren't enough fans. Um, everyone's doing their own thing. And it's uh, too small, so you definitely have to go on tour and get out there. Um, there's, there's bands like, uh, me and my friends in Lord Almighty, actually, and in the parking lot up, I have a rehearsal space right now, and they're a black and roll band. I think they, uh, they played with Terry Street recently, too. Yeah, we've they actually played, talked to them before. Guys, a while ago. Yeah, we actually had them, uh, live on the air late last year, I believe, right, Nam? I think it was late last year. Yeah. Yeah, good dudes, good stuff. I've seen them, uh, play at Cherry Street. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, they're really cool. They're, they're still doing it. Um, we actually we share a tour band with them. Um, and, you know, there's bands like Gru and Born and Mourn and, you know, what have you. We're playing a show with sort of more melodic metal bands coming up on Saturday around here called My Missing Half. Uh, there's lots of death metal going on. One of the other guys in World Almighty is in a death metal band called Top and Birth. Um, all sorts of stuff shows everywhere every night because too much that you can keep track of and actually sort of unsolicited plug here a lot of bands from Boston and Massachusetts and probably all over New England are going to be playing in August I want to say August 9th and 10th in Greenfield, Massachusetts at a uh, like a free admission Hey You Can Heavy Music Festival I think it's the first one of its kind in New England called the RPM Fest and uh, so that's going to be pretty cool. About two stages and like 30 bands and, and other craziness. That sounds like a pretty good time, man. Give us a little idea of uh, what the camaraderie is like up in uh, the local scene up there. Um, you know, is everybody pretty supportive of one another, all the bands that you play with and, and all that? I think almost everyone is really supportive. You always have jerks out there um, that aren't really need to be mentioned by name, they all know who they are. Um, they're elitists in every scene and people who are really into what they're doing and don't really care about anybody else. But for the most part, some people might seem unapproachable at first, but really, when you get to talking to people and you get to that sound of the music, that's really what people care about. And everyone's willing to work with each other and willing to support each other. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're willing to go to everyone's shows. Um, it can be hard to get people up to shows sometimes in Boston. But um, all the behind the scenes stuff, I mean, as far as camaraderie goes, there's a lot of very friendly people up here who really just want to see everybody succeed because you sort of know that if your buddy succeeds, then it's good for everybody, it's good for you. Sounds good. Now, if you wanted to. Uh have a moment to actually say to any of these elitists out there that, uh, you know, what would you want to say to these motherfuckers? I would say that they should probably get their heads out of their asses because they might think they're hot shit right now, but 
things are going to fall apart for them eventually. And if you don't have a team around you and you don't have people who support you in what you do and sort of like to see you succeed or help you out in what you're trying to do, if you don't have that, then eventually it's going to come back to bite you every time. That sounds pretty uh, good to me. All right, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, comparisons or whatever. What kind of, what bands are you, like, into personally? I mean, you know, what do you, what do you like to listen to? I don't listen to a huge amount of music, so it's going to be probably an eclectic little mix of stuff. Um, I like the Mars Volta, although I should say I only really like their first two albums with uh, John Theodore on drums, the Beast. Thomas Persian all the plays like crazy. Um, I like Mastodon, obviously. You should get, can't really say anything about them. They just played in Boston and melted everyone's faces, like literally a light cannon band at the audience. So that was pretty unbelievable. Um, there's some, uh, some Norwegian band, the, the Shining, sort of jazz, black jazz band. Been pretty cool recently. Um, I think the other guys in the band, our bassist is has I think the weirdest music preferences out of anybody. He gets all of his music recommendations from the internet, so it's obviously completely out of left field. And he is a kind of botch, so I guess it's not that weird. Um, like Car Bomb, he likes the band that you see from. I want to say what I call Groovis Malt. They're really small time, like, indie jazz band. And he played all this stuff for me. He, like, trashed me in the car. He plays me this stuff off these iPods. And it's all, like, mind-blowingly amazing stuff. And these are complete unknowns. And it sort of depresses me sometimes that someone can be so talented and put up such great music and absolutely nobody knows who they are. Yeah, I've, I've heard... Drummer. I've heard most of the bands you're talking about, and they're all pretty badass. So, oh, yeah, and your drummer, and your drummer. Our drummer is like a, a dream theater, another Arctica, Led Zeppelin kind of guy. Now, how do you think um, the different influences affect when you guys come into, you know, to do Bion? You know, when you got the power metal and you got the, the different stuff there. I think it comes through an attitude mostly. We play not like incredibly technical music, like music school technical, but we play music that we have to be paying attention to. Um, so I think it's more of a, a subconscious sort of the way we play the notes and the way we phrase stuff is influenced by everything that we've ever listened to. And we sort of try to shape a vibe based off of that. And it all just sort of mishmashes together into this weird sort of the rock thing. Okay. Not we usually. don't like cool with other bands, exactly. Um, but there are definitely parts in our songs that you could, if you listen to it closely enough, you could say, oh yeah, like I understand sort of what those guys were listening to when they wrote that part or when they recorded that part. All right, cool. Now I've usually asked a few questions here about this frame of stuff. You ready to do that, sir? Your, your yeah, famous sir. questions? Yeah, man. Um, if you guys could put together a tour, uh, buy on, and let's say four bands, who's the who's the big four for buy on? I mean, who would you guys want to go out on tour with, dead or alive? I mean, who? What would be like dream type situation? Dream type situation. Um, I'm gonna say Mastodon. Let's say the Foo Fighters. I'm going to say Bikini Kill, and then that last one's a wild card. Let's say local opener for that one. Wow, Foo Fighters and uh, Mastodon. On the bill, yeah. Foo Fighters and Mastodon would definitely be an interesting mix. I mean, both great bands, but I don't know if uh, if they'd ever play together. But yeah, it's pretty yeah, cool. I mean, I'd be interested to hear how that would go. I think they would probably get along as people, but I don't know if their fans would. Well, I mean, everybody knows that Dave Grohl's got the ability to, to, to play, you know, with the metal legends as well. So, you know, you probably yeah. you probably could make that happen, you know? Oh, yeah. 
Okay, and uh, the other question, Nob. <laughs> if uh, if the bag if if the bagman and I were to give you an MP3 player, and you have it for a month, and you guys stockpile it with a bunch of stuff, and you cannot erase anything that you put on it, and you have to give it back to us in a month, what guilty pleasures maybe that you don't want people knowing that you guys are listening to? Are you listening to? You're gonna tell us because you know we're cool, yeah. and, and you know we're, we're not gonna tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so what guilty pleasures are we gonna find on your iPod? Um, uh, I'm gonna say probably pink. Wow, okay. my guilty pleasure. All right. No, Lady she's Gaga. Maybe. For her music, you know, she's a consummate professional. Hell yeah. No Lady Gaga or maybe some Justin Bieber or something like that, no? I can't sound like that kind of shit. <laughs> well, supposedly Lady Gaga's taken out baby metal, so that, that'll yeah, definitely just be interesting. Heard that. Yeah, should definitely be an that's interesting bill. I no? think uh, I've talked to a bunch of my friends, like my my crusty ass black metal friends, and they actually sound like they're interested in maybe going to one of those shows to just see what's going on. Yeah, there, there is a curiosity there, for sure. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, what we're going to do is, uh, I don't know, did we want to do the other thing we do there, Knob? No? Nah? All right. What we're going to do is a speed round. This is for fun, okay? 20 questions. No particular reason for them, just whatever comes up to the, you know, to your head when, when I ask them. You know, and then if you want to elaborate afterwards, that's cool. All right. All right, man. Have a good time with this. This is just for fun. All right, first one. If you were to get rid of one state in the United States, which would it be and why? I'm going to go with uh, Nebraska. Because it's right in the middle, and you could sort of merge the other states together, and you probably wouldn't do well that much. Okay, cool. Number two, how would unsigned bands communicate in a perfect world? In person, face to face. Yeah, in a, per in a perfect world. Yeah. Did you answer it? <laughs> uh, did I not? Uh, in person, face to face. Okay. All right. I, I think that the old way works pretty well. I don't think the internet necessarily brings all that much to the table. Okay. Do you? Do you think that that makes, uh, do you think music is disposable nowadays? You know, people just listen to it and just kind of move on? A lot of people do. I think a lot of people like music, but they don't like music maybe as much as they think they do. So they're really into it authentically when they're listening to it, but then a little time goes by and it sort of, sort of fades away. If you could change the way that that way of thinking is, what would you do? I think I would, uh, I think having personal experiences with music is what really cemented in people's minds and, uh, creating, like, memorable experiences for them. So, obviously nothing beats a live show, but just giving everybody something that they haven't experienced before that connects them to the music, I think, is probably the one thing that really gets them to have a deeper connection with what they're hearing. Okay. All right, number five. What do you think about when you're alone in your car? Can you say that again? What do you think about when you're alone in your car? I think about, do I have enough room for all this shit, or am I going to have to make two trips? <laughs> that works. <laughs> all right, let's say we came over to your house for dinner tonight. What would you prepare for me and Nob? I'm going to say a microwavable... Mac and cheese. Sounds pretty Probably, good. Probably uh, side of quesadillas, also microwave. Oh, Knob likes quesadillas, I think. Right? Yeah. Well, he's Mexican, I so I think he likes much. them. That's all I do. <laughs> all right, cool. Next one. Uh, do you have a talent other than uh, playing guitar and singing? I'm reasonably okay at writing computer programs. Okay. That's pretty much it. I, I do like web design and stuff. Built to buy on a website. That's not necessarily a talent. Everybody can do that these days, but you know, there you go. Good. 
Okay, number seven. If you could give, if you were given another talent or ability, what would it? What would you want it to be? I wish I could play drums, man. I really do. And why is that? Because those guys got rhythm and a soul. I just scream and you know play guitar and sort of wail away on my instrument. Uh, it works, but I wish I could groove. That sounds pretty good. I hear uh, I hear drummers have more stamina too, so there's that. Yeah, drummers do it with rhythm. That's what I hear. All right, tell us something about yourself that nobody else knows about you. Hmm. I like sports. Not really that interesting, but I try to keep it on the on the down low. I'm a baseball fan, along with everybody else in Boston. But I'm a closet baseball fan. Are you a Boston Red Sox fan? He lives in yeah. Boston. Of course he's a Red yeah, Sox Yeah, but, you know, there's Yankees fans up there. No, there's of course, not. Of course, they get killed if they ever admitted it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would, I'd be sort of hanging off on the fat times during that fight, sort of minding my own business. I'm not proud of it, but it is what it is. Yeah. All right, man, if you were to uh, pick two celebrities to be your parents, who would they be? Um, Courtney Love and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wow. Get to the job, love. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, that works. <laughs> All right, next one. Uh, if you had a question for us, what would it be? We've been doing this since 2006, so it'll be eight years in September. Um, cool. I, yes, I fucking thoroughly enjoy doing OFNR and official fucking new radio um, because we get to talk to bands like yourself and other bands from all over the fucking planet. And that's to me, that's the best part of the job is finding new music because you know, they, for me, this is just for me, for Nob personally. Yeah, I used to work at a record store. That was, like, the first job I ever had. And getting music and buying music used to be a fucking thing. It used to matter. It doesn't really matter anymore, you know. We do, we live in this society where music really is so secondary or third, even, in most people's minds as far as what it means. It used to mean, like, it was, like, the soundtrack to our lives and shit. And so this is the only way I could, like, stay current without being inundated with absolute garbage from the regular terrestrial shit stations out there. Are you saying you're not a fan of Imagine Dragon? I'm not a fan of anything that you could hear on regular radio for the most part. I'm not saying I don't listen to some of that shit, but I listen to a lot of B-side shit if I'm going to listen to a signed band. I listen to the shit that nobody else has been listening to. Certainly none of the fucking top 40 if it's top 40, man, I just can't get into it. Plus, it's it, been played to death. It's just played, played to death, and regular radio is painful for me. I don't know. I'm spoiled. Hmm. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Definitely agree with him. Yeah. It's the worst. You know, and, and so for us, I mean, you know, OFNR is, is, a, is truly, and we were talking about this actually earlier before you came on the air, it, it it's truly a labor of love. Like, we actually pay to do this. Hmm. Like, we actually pay royalties every month. We actually, like, pay to keep our website going and all that other fucking shit. And we're not making anything. You know, I don't fucking play commercials. We don't, you know, sell off airtime or any of that shit. So we truly do this because we're music fans with way too much time on our hands. Which is a good... Well, could not do it without you, so. All right, get back to the next one. All right, if we assembled the other two band members in a room and asked them about you, what would they say? Uh, they'd probably say that I'm kind of a dick. Um, <laughs> you know, everybody they says appreciate, that. Yeah. They appreciate how hard I work, probably. Okay, cool. All right, next one. This would be number 12. Name the scariest moment in your life so far. Uh, the time my friends got mugged at knife point at the train station by this other guy we knew. 
Now that sucks, man. That's pretty fucking scary. Hell yeah. Yeah, that was a bummer. Alright, next one, number 13. If you could be anyone else, who would you be? Um... I gotta go back to Dave Grohl. That dude's got a absolutely fucking key left. Yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah. I heard he, uh... Like some, some Food Fighters fans just put together a Kickstarter to raise money for, uh... Like, unofficial Food Fighters concert or something. Just by themselves. And the band actually agreed to play it. Yeah, I saw that too. I saw I saw that too. They raised like ten grand or some crazy shit. Yeah, that just kind of blows my mind. And like they'll play shows in people's garages and shit. Like when they have off nights on tour, that's just that's just wild. You know why not though? They played in front of hundreds of thousands of people, I'll man. Be Sometimes you, you got to get back to the. I'll really be honest with you. What a what a cool idea. Hmm. You know the fans got behind the band so much that like they raised the capital. They didn't sell tickets, they just fucking all chipped in and made a show happen. Like, it's... It, we live in a weird fucking world now, you know, where this kind of stuff is possible. Would another band do yeah. it? Would another band do it? I don't know. But fucking Dave Grohl is all about the fans and about the people, so they were like, fuck it, yeah, we're gonna do it. Yeah. What are your uh, thoughts on this uh, Kickstarter? A lot of bands are using Indiegogo, Kickstarter, stuff like that. Do you think that's working? Or do you think that's... Uh, Something people just kind of giggle about, you know, behind their back or whatever. I think it definitely works for some people. And it really spectacularly fails for other people. Um, I don't think it's a replacement for the label system. I think that ultimately it's like begging your friends for cash to go do something fun for yourself. And, uh, you know, think whatever you want about that, but... We all know people who have raised like $150,000 for an album on Kickstarter because they were really friendly, well-meaning people and they don't want to support them. And then we also know like a group of idiots who tried to raise like 10 grand for a tour that they were going to do. And we're like, hey guys, give us some money for our tour. It'll be cool. And, you know, we got like 20 bucks or something. So, well, and then the other, yeah. the other side of that, or, you know, is there are bands out there that will you know ask for money and then turn around and like you know put up pictures of personal items that they bought recently that cost multiple millions of dollars or whatever and, and it's like a total kick in the face to the fans that actually did give a fuck it, it has its plus yeah. it has its pluses and minuses and i mean we've seen that locally i've seen that nationally Man. it goes all the way around i mean you got to be careful, you know, and you can do that once. I think. I think you can you could get away with doing a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo once. Uh, you can't do it for every album, you know, because people eventually are just going to be like, it's like any other uh, fundraising effort, any other donation type of a thing. After a while, people go, I, I just gave you money, man. I just gave you fucking twenty bucks last time. Why am I going to do this again? Yeah, people start to wonder where the money went. Yeah, I agree. All right, man. Uh, where in the world would you like to? Would you most like to perform, man? Is there any particular country you'd like to go out out of the country, or specific place you'd like to play more than anywhere else? Anywhere in Japan. Nice pick. They're real metal fans over there, and in England too. Don't worry, got them. Yeah, I mean uh, yeah. Marty Freeman moved there because he wasn't doing well here. So he went over and he's living in Japan now and he's selling out every show he does, so... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Japan seems to be huge fans of just about every kind of music you could possibly think of. And why do you think that other countries like Japan and, you know, like Germany, where they're having the big fests and everything, why do you think they, they appreciate metal so much more than, than the, you know, people in the United States do? I think people in the United States sometimes think that we're a little bit too cool for that kind of thing. Like, we have more important things to worry about, or we, uh, we don't want to be seen as being authentically interested in something that isn't being cool by other cool people. So we'll, we'll get really into, like, EDM or indie rock or what the fuck ever, but if it's not being featured in Pitchfork or Rolling Stone or whatever is cool these days, I don't know, then we're not really, really going to do it. 
the Rolling Stones stopped being any good for anyone a long time ago. Well, you know, you know, yeah. what, you know what I think it is 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 here in America we're fucking spoiled brats, you know, and and yeah. and this is why music has become disposable here in the states is that if you wait long enough, the next best thing, uh, the next big thing, rather, the next big thing will come along, and you can jump on board that, you know, and 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 it'll last for a week or two weeks or a month. And then the next big thing will come out, and you can get on that, you know. And, and we see this. I, I see it all the time on the internet, especially. I mean, you know, you look at shitty example for metalheads, but you look at somebody like Psy as a perfect example. Gangnam Style was like the big fucking thing for a month, two months, six months, maybe most, and now it's gone, you know. And they're on to the next fucking whatever fad is going on. And, and I think that this is the nature of the the industry now and it sucks for people who actually like real music and like actually care like us um, but this is why we do what we do because it's it's the only fucking option to some of this really awful shit that's going out there yeah I think this is uh, I've heard this is what goes on in like South America that they're so into the, all of this other music and these bands just don't go down there it's so uncommon that your favorite band will play in like Brazil or Argentina or something. So when they do go down there, like Iron Maiden is huge or whatever, and then they actually go to Brazil and they get a million people to come to the show. Because when's the next chance you're going to get to see a band like that? And people are just so into it. And in the United States, you have all of this incredible supply of great music that you definitely sort of get used to it. And you think that, oh, I missed them this time, I'll catch them the next time, or oh, I wasn't into that band when they were really cool and upcoming, so, you know, I'll just hang out and wait for the next cool band, and I'll get in on those guys and sort of get complacent and lazy. But where did it stop mattering, you know, with music actually being a part of your life instead of being uh, a part of just what, you know, making yourself popular with everyone because you're listening to one specific, you know, kind of band for that short period of time? What do you think people are hopping from from one band to another because it's easy that's my opinion I, yeah. I, know, I know you're asking Charlie a buy on but it, because of fucking things like Napster Napster started it I mean let's just really be honest Napster started the whole thing and then it just snowballed and now you have iTunes people don't even buy fucking albums anymore dude they fucking buy songs and you can skip the shit that you don't like which is cool but in the same breath you're not getting that same fucking experience this is just my opinion Charlie, you got a different a thought on that? I actually think you're totally right. I think people are really into the idea that, like, maybe the internet can be made and be, like, used as a tool for good or something, and you can turn it into this awesome tool for artists or whatever. Um, but personally, I kind of think that the internet killed music, <laughs> and, or at least music as it was, and now it's something completely different, and there's no going back. No. Okay, let's say you were given the power to change this all. What would you do to, to change all this and, and get get people back to, you know, is there a way to, to, to go back and, I mean, without, you know, cutting the internet and everything out in the process? Shit. Because <laughs> you know, I don't, yeah. Cause riots. I think that if you could somehow figure out exactly when music became worth nothing, that that's where you'd have to go. I think that at some point, I mean, I'm, I'm 28, so obviously I wasn't around way back in the day when things were totally different, but I get the impression that people used to actually be willing to pay money to consume music. Mm-hmm. And it was a real thing, and people would like go out and buy it and be willing to work for it and stuff like that, just like any other thing in the world. And at some point that flipped. And now it's like, music is worth nothing. And if you want to make money, then you have to sell a CD that happens to have music on it. You have to sell a t-shirt. So bands are like, suddenly in the t-shirt selling business instead of the music business because no one will pay for music. So whenever that happens, and I don't know if it's like, there are too many musicians out there because I don't like that idea. I think everyone should play music and everyone should be able to record music and be able to distribute it to as many people as possible. I totally believe all of that. But somehow it feels like there's so much of it and there's so little curation going on that there's just like, there's no value anymore. And it 
probably didn't used to be the case. No, and, and I think I, I totally agree with you. And I, and I think, you know, one of the big problems comes into this idea of people aren't buying music. And so because they're not buying it, they're also not talking about it. You know, when I when I would buy a record or an album, I mean, I'm dating the fuck out of myself by saying a record, but when I would buy, you know, a CD with my hard-earned money, if it was fucking good, I would make sure I told every one of my friends, like, yo, I just spent 20 bucks on this fucking awesome album, you should totally check it out. Now people don't give a fuck. I mean, you know, you buy a single and you're like, yeah, I love this single, and it's on my iTunes, along with a thousand other songs from a thousand other artists that you know, are interchangeable, uh, and some of these bands, I mean, you know, even sign bands now, they all kind of sound the same, you know, if you listen to enough terrestrial radio, everything kind of sounds like everything else, which is why, you know, people ought to be more inclined to, and I think we are in that, in that mode of more and more people are, are heading to the internet, heading to YouTube, which is why they're doing what they're doing, um, to get music, you know, to, to find new things to listen to, but because you're not paying for it, I think there's a less of a proclivity to talk about it with your buddies. Like, yo, you should totally listen to this. You know? I, I don't know. Maybe that's just yeah. I don't know. Uh, I think it's, it's totally a social problem. And I think music is just as amazing as it ever was. And people like it just as much as they ever did. But for some reason, like, the social implications attached to music change. Mm-hmm. And, like, you can totally go and find lots of people who still love music and still pay for it. And, like, there's still a bunch of vinyl stores open in Boston. Um, there's actually some new ones opening recently, I think, uh, pretty recently. Oh, you gotta so go up to Boston. Around. There are definitely people out there who still feel the way everyone or people used to feel, but for some reason it's like the people who are, are not real fans are the people. They're the only people anybody cares about now. And the real fans, it's sort of like, oh, you know, you're going to do whatever you want to do. We don't have to pay attention to you. We don't have to try to meet your needs or put out music that you like because you like music and you're going to like whatever we do. And they just try to focus on the casual fan who's only interested for like two seconds. Real quick side note, since you were talking about vinyl stores in Boston, I know it's not, it wasn't in Boston, but there used to be a store, I think it was in Amherst, called Dynamite Fucking Records. And, dude, that place was fucking awesome. It was like two floors of kick-ass music. And I know the, the owner closed the shop after like 30 years or something because, you know, it is it is a dying business. Um, but it's cool to hear that there are, there are record stores and vinyl shops up in Boston. It means I gotta take a trip to Boston because there's certainly less and less of them here in Connecticut. More and more we hear uh, of these awesome places, uh, you know, closing shop and, and giving up after, you know, however many years they've been doing it. Um, because nobody's coming in to buy fucking an album or a vinyl or a CD or even a tape. Man. Hmm? Yeah, I think there actually is still one open in Hammer, so I think, um, I want to say Mystery Train Records. Oh, right on. I think, I think that's, uh, that's still... Still hanging on by a thread. Okay, got a couple more for you real quick. All right, uh, if you could dabble in any other music genre, what would it be? Probably, uh, probably hip-hop. Okay, well. I don't think I'd be very good at it, but... <laughs> yeah, it's all good, man. DJ Charlie C! <laughs> I can't rap. I wouldn't even try. I think I'd probably just I think I don't know, play, I, play bass or something. I think more uh, metal bands ought to put the incredibly ridiculous intros on their records. You know, where like all the band members are shouting out different people. I, I think that's a really popular thing. I think more people should do it. Hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I like get the, the crossovers. I like to thank my record producer. And my girlfriend from nine years ago, and all this. And meanwhile, the, the track is going, and you're like, when are they gonna actually start singing? Man. Yeah. All right, man. Final question: What's the most fucked up thing you've ever done in your life, man? Um, I haven't done all that many fucked up things. 
I blew up the boring light. Okay. So I'm gonna say I took I took an illicit substance with the uh the intention of making some friends and the uh party sort of ended prematurely. I ended up at home. This is like way, way back. Ended up at home at my parents' house. Sort of out of my mind. It's not even that weird. It's not, not that fucked up, so. Right. Yeah. That's what you get. I can tell a story about my basic, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, maybe we should wait until he's on the phone to defend himself. <laughs> 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 so, um, you guys working on new stuff? I mean, I know you guys got the new EP. Do you have anything that you haven't released that may be in the works, or...? Yeah, uh, most of our set list actually is songs that we have not actually recorded or released in any way. Um, we have a full length in the works. It's like it's in the writing stages, so when I say in the works, it's very much in the works. But it's going to be an actual full length that we spend a lot of time on, and maybe cookies and all that beautiful stuff. And we're gonna aim to probably get started on that this fall. Um, we're doing this little tour here. Coming through Connecticut this week. That's four shows or something. Um, then we have a little bit of a longer run in the beginning of August. Going to go out to like Pittsburgh and Virginia and whatever. Um, I think when we get back from that, we're probably going to settle down for the long, cold New England winter and hang out some rock and tunes. Right. Okay, and and so, like, recording-wise, do you guys go to a studio, or do you do it yourselves, or...? We do it ourselves. The first uh, hive mind was totally in a studio. That was at New Alliance in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I think they did a, a great job engineering it and everything. Um, Mix was cool. If I had known more about mixing at the time, I probably would have made some different decisions. But... I think the session EP, we did it all ourselves with our friends, um, basically in a basement, um, kind of in a warehouse space, actually, um, with very, very minimal gear, and he mixed it all himself. So I think the next thing we record, we're going to record it that way, and we're going to have maximum control and just spend as much time as we have to spend to get it sounding exactly right. Um, and then we're probably going to have a professionally mastered. That's right. Because mastering is important, and not everybody can do it. Right, right, right. Well, if it's anything like what you put out so far or better, I'm definitely looking forward to it for sure myself. Yeah, man. All right, well, that's uh, pretty much all we got for you, man. Um, yeah, excited to hear that you guys are going to be in Connecticut. Um, I wish it was on a different day so I could actually get out there. But, uh... <laughs> Cherry Street, you guys are going to love fucking Cherry Street. That place is, like, the best, man. The, the people there truly give a fuck about the, the independent bands. They treat everybody really good, and, and it's a great little venue to, to rock out, and, you know, it's it's basically like our second headquarters. Yeah, it's kind of like a family atmosphere there. Everybody knows everybody, so it's a good time. It's been so friendly and good to us so far. Nothing to get me to say that yeah, man, for sure. Anywhere we could uh, check you out online, of course, on Facebook and Twitter and stuff. You guys have your own website, too? or? Yeah, so the website is um, bion-music.com, and that has links to all of our other stuff on it. Um, Facebook.com slash bionmusic, no dash in that one, and bion.bandcamp.com. Find all of our music there. And we do have a YouTube channel, a I'm pretty sure it's called just buy on music, but we don't post all that much stuff there. Um, there's a couple tracks, actually, a couple videos that we have that are songs that we have not recorded in the studio, so there's some live videos there, some, some alternative material that you can definitely hear if you come out to the show on Friday. We're gonna play a bunch of that stuff. Right. Check it out. Cool, man. Well, hey, thank you so much for giving us a buzz and talking with us here tonight on OFNR. Hell yeah. Thanks for having us. 
Yeah, man. Uh, before you go, we need you to do a quick little artist ID, a little breaker for us. Tell us your name. Tell us, tell us the band. And tell them that they're listening to OFNR forever. Hi, this is Charlie from Bion, and you are listening to OFNR forever. Beautifully done. Thank you so much, man. Uh, keep in touch with us, man. Yes, please do keep in touch with us, man. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us. And we're definitely going to be coming back to Connecticut, so we'll be in touch. For sure. And we're going to play some buy on here in just a little bit. Is there any song that you want to that you want us to play? Or uh, I don't know if you've played it already, but just throw on Outskirts. How about that? All right. Sounds good, man. can do that. All right, we'll be talking to you soon, man. Yes, thanks, Charlie. All right. Thank you very much. Take it easy, man. Peace out, brother. All right, Charlie from Bayon. Good stuff right there. We're going to be playing some live. Live? No, no. We're going to be playing because we are live. We're going to be playing some Bayon. <sighs> okay, now you, can actually, break. now you can actually hear me again. Um, I don't know what the fuck is going on with our phone. Hmm. But uh, it cost sixty dollars for me to get a Skype line again, and I think I'm just gonna pay the sixty fucking dollars because when when we had our Skype line, we never had these issues. Yeah. It seems like every other week we have a weird it, like it's was working earlier. Am I wrong? And it was ringing no. earlier. No, it was, totally, it was ringing and everything. Yeah. It was ringing and everything, and I I don't know what the fuck happened. I, I don't know. Voxox, you suck. Hmm. And uh, unfortunately, Skype is not free and. They changed the way Google Voice works, so now that's not working right. Figures. I don't know if it's my computer or what. I doubt it, because everything else seems. You to find work okay. something that works great and you love it, and then they go and fucking and change, they change it. it. Yeah. So and, you know, and know. it's true with everything. So. Um, it is nine fifty-two. Huh. We're gonna play some music, then we're gonna come back and we're gonna call it a night, huh. because nobody gives a fuck. So we don't either. I want to thank Charlie from Bion. Go check them out with Versa, Death Prayers, and uh, I forget who else he said. Somebody from upstate New York. Hmm. So, should be a pretty fucking good show. That's Friday night at the Metal Mecca of Connecticut, known as Cherry Street Station. Now, uh, just because we're leaving early doesn't mean that uh, Clover, you know, can't stick around. Clover from New yeah, York. That's Clover, what it is. Um. Doesn't mean you can't stick around, cause you know we could what we could run the rest of the songs, right? We could do whatever the fuck we want. Yeah, we're gonna run the rest of the songs we got lined up for you, all the local metal and such. I'm just tired and uh, you know want to get home before midnight. Yeah. So we're gonna play some Bion. I'm gonna do two for you. I'm gonna play Outskirts, cause that's what Charlie wanted to hear. And then I'm gonna play a Wiser Man as well. Yeah. Some nasty D. And others coming up. Don't go anywhere. It's a fish of fucking new radio. We'll be back in just a little while. That's right. Stick.
Taste the magic of blow paste So give it salty sausage a peppermint taste With the magic of blow paste Freshen up the job before you turn out the lights And get a pearl necklace to go with your pearly whites If you want to make his day and put a smile on his face Taste the magic of blow paste Yes, sir, e Bob. Or yep. two. Get yourself some blow paste. Go to cheekychacha.com. Tell Jasmine we sent ya from go off to, an hour. Go to facebook.com slash blow paste. Go to Twitter. Get on Twitter. Get off fucking Facebook. His knob says fresh breath guaranteed, right? That's right. Yep. Played some blow paste. Played some uh, carnivora. This is what you just heard before that. Nasty disaster in there with metal up your ice. Mm-hmm. And two from Bion, Wiser Man and Outskirts. Good stuff right there. Go check them out on Bandcamp. Now it is 10 o'clock and normally we would be getting into events and or news. Yeah, but go to Metal Syndicate and check it out. The listings are right there. Sure. Go to Metal Syndicate. Metal C-Y-N-D-I-C-A-T-E dash C-T dot com. And we'll have the news for you next week. And we will have the news for you next week. I'm just very fucking tired, and I want to get home before midnight. Hmm. So we are going to wrap up our evening. I want to thank Charlie from Bion for calling in, saying what's up, giving us a little rundown on what the fuck they're up to. It's pretty fucking cool. It's always cool to find new bands, man. I, I One of the big things that I really enjoy doing uh, oh, yeah. with this job you know, is finding uh, new bands. One show that is happening this weekend, I don't even need a uh, flyer for. Into the Coven is playing at Diamond Lills here in Waterbury. They're playing with Lightsbane. They're playing with uh, Composing the Apocalypse. The return of them, yeah. And uh, I think there was one other band, so maybe I do need the flyer in front of me. But hey, that should be enough right there. Those three bands alone should be enough for you to go out and check that out. It's a $5 cover. Diamond Lills right here in Waterbury. It is Saturday night. Uh, I don't. I I had told the guys from Into the Coven that I was going to be there because it is literally fucking within walking distance from here. But it is my wife and I's wedding anniversary, and unfortunately, we have two kids, one of whom is attached to my wife's hip. And the last time when we went to Frank and Lauren's wedding, we dropped the kids off at the grandparents. And the baby screamed for two hours straight. So I can't do that. I can't do that to my in-laws. I, I feel I, I always feel bad when I hear that. It's like, oh man, because I would totally fucking strangle somebody if I hear a kid screaming for two hours, man. Wouldn't st- strangle a kid, but I'd strangle somebody. Somebody'd have to get in line and have to fucking strangle. So I may make it out there. I'm going to try. I'm going to try my goddamn this. But it is my wedding anniversary, so, you know, I I should probably spend some time with my wife. Probably a good idea. Mm. But you should definitely get out there. Sure, there's a lot of other shows that you should check out. I know that the uh, Bion, Death Prayers, Clover, and Versa is Friday night at Cherry Street. So go check that out. It's $5 cover, 21 and over, always at Cherry Street. Next week, we've got Keith motherfucking Pearsons. You heard him today looking for a starting band he wouldn't he wouldn't accept my application bagman yeah. i'm a little offended i'm a musical genius i don't think people uh, appreciate my musical genius mr bagman this is why i'm not in a band anymore cuz nobody would take me seriously but you know what there's a lot of bands out there that aren't being taken seriously so that's for shit sure man lots of great bands go check them all out Check out the uh, rundown, the list. We'll even run down the bands that we didn't get a chance to play that we're going to play here that won't be on the recording because the recording is going to end pretty much after we say goodnight. Mm-hmm. But we'll give you the list anyway on the uh, official FN Radio website within the next week or so. Yep. Go check out OFNRForever.com. 
get all the playlists from the last 13 weeks, I've got an article that I'm finishing up tomorrow. In regards to what we were talking about today with Charlie and what we talked about with The Shape last week, is music disposable now? I've got a whole article that I've been working on pretty diligently the last couple of weeks. Because I want to do it right, you know, I don't want to just throw it together and put it out there. It's, it's kind of an important topic. And no one else has really addressed it or talked about it, and I really want it to be the place to get that kind of information. So I'm, you know, do, I'm doing research, and I'm actually writing it up really nicely, and talking about my experiences, and I'm even going back and listening to these shows so I can get, you know, uh, the shape and Charlie's, uh, you know, thoughts on it. And so next few days, hopefully, I can get that up there. Um, and there's been a lot of people that we've interviewed that that have had opinions towards this. Sure. You know, even Turbo, when hmm. we talked to Turbo. Right. You know. A lot of people have opinions on, on all this, and, and, and they all make sense, mm. you know, so. And so, you know, I, I, I did want to, you know, kind of wrap up the show a little differently than I started the show. Um, you know, I, I, I'm i in a funk today because I'm fucking tired and I want to go to sleep. But I will not apologize in any way, shape, or form for any of the things that I've said. One, it's open arms. It's my therapy. It's my fucking... Uh, it's always been my way of being able to say whatever the fuck I want. And whatever consequences may come, come. I really just don't give a fuck. And, and that's really where it comes down to. Like, at the end of the day, I, I repeat what I said when I started. I just don't give a fuck. Um, I think that, that this scene, if you will, needs a, a boost in the arm. I think that or kick in the ass. I, I think shows like what happened at City Limits this past weekend are a good indicator of what it could be. Mm-hmm. I think shows like the Festival of of the Dead, even though I wasn't there, uh, I think that's a good indicator of what shows could be. Or the Cyperna Kali Ma CD release party. Which that I, was which another I, which example. Which I was there. Um, a, a good indicator of what the scene could be. Hmm. There is a family and a community here in Connecticut, and they are die-hard motherfuckers, ride-or-die type bitches. Uh, and I say that with with love in my heart because you know uh, I don't mean to call them bitches, but you know they're ride-or-die type folk. And uh, I think if we were to see more of that, you know, more of this uh, camaraderie. Not just because uh, it was massively promoted by bands such as Sloth, a.k.a. Bonded Through Hate. Did want to touch on that real quick, put that out there. Um, consistency. D- dead by way. Yeah, I'd like to see some fucking consistency. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every show should be just as important as the last. The thing is, there are so many fucking shows. And a lot of the times, it's the same old shit and that's where that's where I really really think that this this scene especially could use a big shot in the arm and this is where Olaf and R used to play a heavier part in bringing new and different bands to the area uh, granted I just don't have the time that I used to have I don't have a crew of people like I used to have it's the Bagman and I really Shellshock will be back in the fall but that's it. It's us. You know, so when we can't make it out, I know there's an absence. I know Olaf and R is respected and loved. And, and the reason that you guys get upset when we're not there is because you do respect and love what we do. You just have to kind of understand, A, we're not rich folks. B, I have a family with two fucking little kids. Little kids. And I don't get to see them all week long. There's a personal uh, life to be considered. Yeah. You know, we both have our own personal lives outside of this. Yeah. You know, and maybe that's not always so consistent either, you know, I mean. Sure. You know, in order to go out every weekend, it, it you know, it's going to cost money that, that we may not always have. And you got to understand that. Yeah. But, I mean, we come here every week and we do this show. And it's Every free. week. And, and it's, it's free. free. And you can do it. And you can listen for free. It's not free for us. But it's free for you guys. And the reason we do it is because we love it. Yeah, I mean, it's the only there, reason. There is no other reason. There is no other reason. There is no politics. There is no bullshit. You're always going to get the truth as we see it mm-hmm. here. 
There is no censorship of any kind. And some of you out there listening may be offended by what we've said tonight or any time. I'll be honest with you, though. No, you mean, can look around and see the clues to what we're talking about. We're not just, you if, know, if you're butthurt, talking about bullshit. If you're butthurt you know? by, you butt by anything that we've said, one of two things is true. A, you're a pussy. Or mm-hmm. B, you see the truth in what we're talking about. And so it upsets you. Hmm. The reality... Or you're completely clueless, which is a damn you, shame. That's the third thing. Big show coming up. Cherry Fest. We're going to talk to Keith next week from She Walks Without Legs. Find out all about that show, how he put it together, why he's doing it again this year, mm-hmm. what it takes to put on a show. You know, we don't get to, do, we, we don't talk about that much. Right. And there's so much that goes into putting on a show. There is. And it's really a thankless job most of the time, Shit. man. It really is. Quick shout outs to Audio Vault Entertainment, since it is a thankless job. Shout outs to Eric Ioka. Yeah, absolutely. Um, glad to hear your pops is doing better. So absolutely. Good to hear about that. Hell yeah. Shout outs to the Metal Syndicate, of course. Mm-hmm. Agrippa and Alan always do a, a bang up job. I mean, just a fucking ridiculous job. Always out at every fucking show, all the time. Sometimes doubles. Sometimes doubles. Yep. Shout outs to DIU TV. Uh, shout outs to Bull Spike fucking radio tomorrow at 1 o'clock. You can tune into the asylum 1 to 4 if you're so inclined. Check out Turbo. Uh, let's see. Thursday is modern rock mixed with metal, mixed with independent tunes. Friday starts off the all independent weekend. You know the deal. All independent weekend means all independent music all weekend long from around the world. On Sunday we've got uh, the syndicated syndicast. Sundays at seven. If you like the metal syndicates, awesome podcast, the metal syndicast, and you don't want to grab it there and you want to hear it again, you can check it out here at seven p.m. Every other week we have chaos. It seems to be. So we had one this past week. We won't have one again next week, but maybe the following week. Keep it locked, because we always announce when Chaos is going to be on. It's kind of impromptu. And be sure you check it out when you can, because, you know, if you don't check it out, then you fucking missed you it missed every it. week. That's right. We don't we don't rebroadcast it. We don't podcast it. We don't put it on YouTube. You, you missed it. You miss it. It's mm-hmm. live, and that's it. Bagman gets it. Oh, I get it. Because, uh... You know, Bagman's a, a staffer here. Mm-hmm. But you guys aren't going to get it unless you tune in live. Monday is Metal Monday, Thrash Metal. We give the finger to Mondays because fuck Mondays. Yeah, check out some of the fucking metal on Mondays. It's pretty, good shit spinning on off and our all fucking day on Monday. That's right. Really heavy, brutal shit. Tuesday, of course, the 90s at, uh, all day long, Grunge Garage. We open up the Grunge Garage and give you the best 90s music that we can. Right up until 8 p.m. We will be back here next week for a full show. None of this uh, banker's hour bullshit that we're doing tonight. I'm sorry. I'm tired. Next week, we will have a full show. We'll bring you the news. We'll get caught up. And uh, then we've got shows upon shows. Next couple of weeks, we got interviews. we got Keith. We've got Jesse James of Posademic Entertainment. And Compose the Apocalypse and his new band, which I forget. We've got Jesse May of Alternative Control, Pink Missile. And tons of other And stuff. tons of other shit. Yeah. Uh, we've got... Uh, ba, ba, ba. Who's after that? Oh, AJ. AJ fucking Pelletier from fucking In the Red. Been looking I forward can, to talking to him. Yeah, I cannot yeah. wait to talk to him, dude. Because I, I really do love In the Red, dude. I am I'm all up on their dick, dude. They are one of those bands that just sounds so fucking good, dude. Both live on their CDs, they're just fucking. They're phenomenal, man, and they should be more known than they are. Hmm. Bands like that that instill my confidence in what's going on in this scene. Uh, shout outs to Into the Coven. Sorry, Josh, we never did get back to you. I don't know what the fuck happened with our phone line. Um, that's about it. We'll be back here next time, next week, eight o'clock, eight to eleven. We will be back with a full show next week. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you missed any portion of this show, check it out on YouTube each and every week. You can check out the last 13 weeks right on YouTube. There's a whole playlist, actually. Right mm-hmm. on uh, YouTube.com slash user slash official FN radio. Just look us up, official FN radio. There's tons of stuff up there. 
Did you know that our suffocation video is up to 5,000 something views? Nice. Pretty fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. Go check it out. There's lots of videos, lots of music videos, interviews, performances. They're only going to get from OFNR. So go check it all out. And of course, check out OFNRforever.com. My oh, yeah. name is Nob, and I'm out of here. See you next time week all right is. real quick uh this is a song we're gonna play crypto dera out of new york we're gonna play uh, unrestricted from virginia fear to tyrant from new haven half past human from vermont mongrel from boston Kali Ma from seymour and lord almighty from boston one more time thanks to charlie from bayon out of boston mass for checking in with us tonight we'll see you next week people peace the fuck out bitches and this show ends right here, right now. So if you're not tuned in live, you miss those songs. Go check them out on the program each and every week on OFNRforever.com. For the Bagman, for Nob, we're the fuck out of here. See ya next week. Oh, girl, more, not my, my, my.